everyone, it's Leanne from Scrappin' with Flair, and I'm here today to show you how to make this fabulous mini. Here, let me get this out of the road here. So this mini I made using the Tim Holtz binder clips, and they're very easily attached with just these little brads here. They look very nice, they're nicely finished on the inside. Um, so I'll just quickly go through this album. So this album is approximately, I don't have the exact measurements, about five by seven. And I made it using the Little Yellow Bicycle uh, Tiny Princess paper. And I also used the embellishments that you can purchase to go along with the paper. This little um, edging here is uh, a tissue paper lace. And it's actually very pretty. Um, some of the other embellishments I cut out of paper, like this one here, I just cut out of the paper. So, very easy, very simple mini to put together. It's a lot of fun. It's quick. So we'll go ahead and get started. So this one I'm making, it's approximately five by five. Uh, and so I'll just show you how I covered the chipboard at first. So the first thing you have to do, obviously, cut your chipboard to size, and then you're gonna cut your paper about an inch or an inch and a half bigger than your chipboard so you have enough room to wrap it around. I covered my uh, chipboard with adhesive and I really like the score tape, so um, that is one of my favorite adhesives to use, actually. So we'll just go ahead and pick this off. I found that using a little pick is way easier than trying to get it off with my nails. This goes way faster. This is my second time around making this video. The first time, uh, it took me just about a half an hour and uh, my wonderful husband bought me a new video camera and the files were too big and it was just a big headache. So this time around, I am prepared. I'm just going to show you how to cover the one part, the the one piece of the chipboard here and the other pieces are covered exactly the same. So after you get all of that peeled off, what you're gonna do is just kinda eyeball it, center it in the middle of your paper. Oh, I should tell you too that the paper that I'm using this time is from uh, Tim Holtz Crowded Addict Paper Stash. Um, it's really nice paper. Uh, so yeah, so after you get that all stuck down, you wanna give it a good press down you can use a brayer or you can use your bone folder just to make sure that it's secure then you're going to go ahead and take your scissors and you're going to cut at a 45 degree angle and about an eighth of an inch away from the corner of the chipboard you don't want to cut right against the chipboard because the corner of your chipboard will stick out i mean it's not a tragedy if that does happen you can always ink it um, to cover it up uh, but it just gives it a more finished look. So you just go ahead and cut all those corners off. Like I said, approximately 45 degree angle, about an eighth of, a bit of an inch from the corner of your chipboard. So what I like to do that makes folding it over a little bit easier is I take my bone folder and I just score a line down the sides of all my chipboard. And it just makes a nice, clean, crisp fold when you go to fold that paper over. So I'm going to pick off the rest of the outside strips here. And then you just go ahead and I just push it down against my table, fold it up and over. And this is a little bit thicker chipboard, so I want to make sure that I get it folded right up against the corner. Can you see me here? Yep right up against the corner or the edge of that chipboard because this chipboard is a little bit thicker. I actually bought this at, uh, at a scrapbooking store here in town. And you're just going to go around making sure that everything is nice and tight and secure. And then I just push it down with my bone folder. If you had thinner chipboard, you would probably wouldn't have to um, push it over as far. Um, but because my chipboard is a little bit thicker, we're just going to make sure that we get nice crisp folds, nice finished look. And you just push it all down. Now, of course, the inside here doesn't look all so pretty. So I'm going to take a piece of cardstock. And so I'm just going to go ahead and peel this stuff off. So 
So once you have all of your pieces covered, go ahead and do that. And you can see that um, I didn't quite cut my pages at 45 because I've got a little piece. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the little piece of chipboard sticking through my corners here, but that's okay because I can go back later and uh, just put some distress ink over top of that and it'll cover right up and no one will ever know the difference. I can even add some embellishment or something like that on the corners of the chipboard. So what I'm going to do next is I've covered all of the pieces. Um, I This one was the same colors that as the one that I'm just doing now but I've uh, distressed it or used the distress inks to kind of color it up a little bit. Um, so the inks that I'm using are Fire Red, Rusty Hinge, Fire Red, Walnut Stain, and Vintage Photo. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink up my sponge. And then again, starting off your page and kind of pulling it in and you get a nice distress color. This rusty hinge has got to be one of my favorite colors. I am an orange person. Um, so I love using this color. So I'm just going to do opposite corners with the rusty hinge and then I'm going to go ahead and do with the fired brick on the other side, on the other corners. And again, starting off the paper and pulling my ink towards the center. The great thing about these distress inks, it doesn't matter what colors you choose to use. They all kind of seem to blend in together. Then I'm going to go in with my vintage photo. Kind of muddy up those colors a little bit. You don't want it too perfect. I like that distressed look. And then last but not least, I'm going to go in and use the walnut stain. And I really like on my distressing when I do it is dark edges. So I'm going to tip my distress tool up on a real angle and I'm just going to get the edges of my paper here because I really like those dark edges. And just do that all the way around. So the, yeah, the first time I made this video, like I said, it was 24 minutes long. I tried editing it. It was a disaster. So I said to heck with it and I decided to make a new one. Make sure I got the lids back on everything here. Okay, so once you have your covers uh, covered with your paper, what you're going to do is you need a ruler. Now I like the Tim Holtz ruler because it's got a zero right in the center here. Um, so I can line everything up. I've covered, <clears throat> pre-covered my spine that I'm going to use. And I've also pre-embossed the piece of paper that is going to kind of hold everything together for me. So this piece of paper again is from the Crowded Addict um, paper stash and I embossed it using the Ultimate Grunge uh, Tim Holtz stamp, stamp set and uh, I used, I do believe it is, yeah the Walnut Stain distress embossing powder because I really like the texture. I'm a texture person too. Um, so I really like the texture of the distress embossing powders. Um, it gives it kind of a sandpapery kind of feel. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go ahead and put this all together. So what we're going to do first is we're going to lay it down. Of course we want the side we want up is going to be facing down. And we're going to center it on here. How big is this piece of paper here? It is four and three quarters. So you center it just like so on there. Now you're going to take your piece of chipboard and you're going to put the zero of the chipboard on the zero of the ruler on the center of the chipboard. And again, 
I don't, my measurements here aren't exact because I'm not an exact science kind of person. Um, I, I eyeball lots of things, <clears throat> but if you want to make it exact, you surely can. It'll make lining it up a whole heck of a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my score tape again <clears throat> on the back of my spine. Nice thing about the score tape too, it's easily, uh, you can rip it quite easily with your fingers. So we'll just peel that off. Again, you want to use uh, a really nice, strong, adhesive two-sided tape um, on this. You can use a liquid adhesive, but the problem that you run into with the liquid adhesive is sometimes you get bubbling um, of your paper and you have to use a brayer to make sure that you get all those bubbles out beforehand. All right, so I got that not centered. Now I have it centered. Okay, and then you're gonna take your spine piece. And this time I want my distress side on the up. Put it right in the center there. Hopefully I got it straight. And you're just gonna push it down. And again, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna run my brayer over top of it. And you can hear how scratchy that distress is. I didn't get all those release crystals out there. <clears throat> 